In this tutorial, we'll take a look at function notation. And function notation is uh, a specific notation set up for using for illustrating or depicting functions. And so it's, it's kind of similar to like the y equals, but instead of y equals, you've got this function. So uh, we'll get into an example here in a moment. In this first one, uh, Sydney makes camp at the base of a mountain where the temperature starts at 18 degrees Celsius. And as she hikes up the mountain, she finds that the temperature drops about 6 degrees per thousand meters. Now, remember, it's per thousand, not per meter. That would be a pretty big drop if it was per meter. So the equation, T of H equals 18 minus 6H, so there's the, the drop of 6 meters per thousand meters, is the height, or sorry, is the, uh, where H is the altitude uh, in thousands of meters, and this is the function notation. So this is read T of H. It's the temperature at a, at whatever the height is, the altitude is, and this is one symbol. It's not a T multiplied by H, this is one symbol, the temperature at H uh, thousands of meters. So the, so that's the, uh, how the temperature relates to the altitude. So we're going to answer three questions here. In A it says, what is the temperature 2,000 meters up the mountain? So we would start with our function here. So T of H is 18 minus 6H. And if we want to know the temperature 2,000 meters up, then we would substitute 2 in place of H because it's 2,000 meters. So put 2 in place of H, so 6 times uh, 2 is 12, so it's 12 or subtracted from 18. So that's the change. It's gone down 12 degrees as she hiked up those 2,000 meters. And so at 2,000 meters, it's down to 6 degrees. So the temperature is 6 degrees at 2,000 meters. In B, you're asked to find the temperature at 7,500 meters up the mountain. Now, 7,500 or 7,500 is 7.5 thousands. So we put 2 in for the 2,000, so we put 7.5 for the 7.5 thousands. So if we multiply uh, 6 by 7.5, we get 45. So 18 minus, gone down 45 degrees. 18 minus 45 is negative 27. So that negative 27 would be the temperature at the altitude of 7,500 meters up the mountain. That's starting to be pretty high. So that's why it's quite low. Last question here. Uh, at what altitude is the temperature 0 degrees? So in this case, we're not asked to find the temperature at a certain height. We're asked to find the height that the temperature is 0. So that 0 goes in place of T of H, not in place of H, because it's the temperature. So in place of the T of H, we put 0 and solve for H. We're trying to find the height that gives us a temperature of 0 degrees. And I want to solve for uh, H here, so I'm going to isolate for the 6H first. So the first thing I would do is, and there's a couple ways you can think of this, uh, we could add 6H to both sides to get the H by itself. We add, of course, remember you always got to do the same thing to both sides. So we're going to add 6H here. So if we do that, of course, those add to 0, and we would get 6H equals 18, uh, dividing out the 6. Those 6s divide out, so we get H equals 3. And that 3 would represent 3,000 meters. So at 3,000 meters, the temperature is 0 degrees. Uh, so on the second slide here, so function notation is a, just another method for writing an equation uh, relating some variables. Uh, f of x is a very common one you'll see. Uh, the f is actually the name of the function, and the x is the variable it's written in terms of. So when, when it says it would be written in terms of the variable x. So this is read f of x, which, which simply means the function's value at this particular x value. What's the like the temperature at this particular height? What's the function's value at that particular x value? Now you may have seen something like this before. This is written in that y equals mx plus b form, y equals 3 minus 7x or negative 7x plus 3. So if we want to write that in function notation, we could write it as f of x equals 3 minus 7x. Notice that x is the variable here, so that's what the variable I would use in my function here. And I didn't have to call it f. It could have been g of x or b of x or q of x. It wouldn't have to be f. f is often used because the word function starts with f, but it doesn't have to be always f. If we have this function uh, h uh, equals, and this is actually like a, 
um, this is a, a parabola. It's like a almost like a physics example. It's uh, the uh, uh, motion of a projectile. Uh, he, the height is negative 5 times t squared plus 20t plus 3. These values actually have meanings in the terms of physics. Uh, this is actually, if you study any physics, this is actually negative 4.98 in the planet Earth, but we'll, I'll round to the nearest whole number here. So that's written in, in terms of uh, h in terms of t. As a function, we would write it like this. Uh, we would write, if I called h the height, the height at a particular time, h of t would be negative 5t squared plus 20t plus 3. So that's what it looks like in function notation. And example 2, it says evaluate each of the function uh, f of negative 3. We're asked to find f of negative 3 when f of x is 6x minus 1. So that means to put negative 3 in place of x here. So we would write f of negative 3 equals 6 times negative 3. Now a really common mistake here is to forget and write the x here. See, we know the particular value for x is negative 3. That's why that uh, negative 3 should be there. So 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Minus 1 is negative 19. So f of negative 3 is negative 19. The function's value at negative 3 is negative 19. And I'll show you a little bit more on the next and last slide, more of what that means in terms of a graph. But just some evaluation here for now. Uh, so in this one, g, we're asked to find g of a half when g of t is 4t squared plus t minus 2. So that half is the value for t. So we're going to put in place a t here and here. So t is the half squared there, the half is here. Now, if I want to do a half squared, and let me get my pen going here, a half squared now, there's a couple ways to do this. It's actually a half times a half. It's two halves because the exponent is a two there. And in the denominator, in the denominator two times two is four. So there's going to be four on the bottom here. And in the numerator, we're doing one times one, which of course is one. So a half squared is a quarter. So in the next line here, that's why my half squared change into a quarter, uh, minus a half. And I'm kind of looking ahead here to get a common denominator. See this 2 here, negative 2, has a denominator of 1. So I want the same denominator as a half here. I'd multiply that top and bottom by 2. So that's where my 4 over 2 comes from. 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2. Now here we're multiplying 4 by a quarter. And let's get the pen back here again. So if we're multiplying 4 by a quarter, maybe we'll do this over here. See, this is actually 4 over 1. So in the uh, numerator, 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 4 is 4 also in the denominator. So that's actually equal to 1. But kind of looking ahead here, see, I've got denominators of 2 here and here. So let's get the same denominator with that. And so instead of writing as 1, which same as 1 over 1, I could multiply it top and bottom by 2. So 1 over 1 is the same as 2 over 2. So right here you're going to see in a moment a 2 over 2 come in in place of this 4 times 1 quarter. Let's get rid of that. So there's the 2 over 2. Um, uh, another way to do this too, some people might uh, show you this is again so sort of looking ahead to see that well, okay what's my denominator going to be um, you could say well why don't we divide this by two make that two and divide this by two and so two times one is this two and there's actually a denominator one here that one times this two is this two as well so that's another way to get that it's two over two so uh, 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 4 over 2, so 2 plus 1 is 3, minus 4 would be uh, negative 1, so the answer would be negative a half. So g of a half equals negative a half. And last uh, page here, I asked you to evaluate each of the following, so uh, I'm giving you both uh, a graph of this and what the function is. And the first one says find h of 1. Well, 1 is the uh, x value on this axis. So here's where x is 1. So what you would do is find the 1 and 
we would go up or down to the graph where it exists above there and then go across so it looks like uh, the h of x value would be about 18. And of course if you have the function we could check that so negative 5 times 1 so I'm putting a, uh, 1 in place of x here squared plus 20 times 1 plus 3 and yeah, looks right on 18. So the second one 4.5 now if you have the function we could just again to go back and change this to be 4.5 4. And I submit the calculator. I can calculate. You can replay and just edit things. So I should expect this to be around negative 8.25. Okay, if I have the function. Now on the graph, it might be difficult to get the 0.25, but 4.5, see 4.5 is right about here. So we get down to the graph and across. So what well, looks like is around negative 8. I would probably only estimate that to be negative 8 from the graph. My calculator will be a little more accurate because I actually have the function. So uh, again, reading from the graph, you may not be exactly on what the function value should be because of those decimals. Uh, C here says find x if h of x equals 20. Uh, well, 20 is right here, so we will go across. Where does it touch the graph? Well, it actually touches in two places. So it touches here, and so that looks like around 1.2, 1.3, something like that. And then it also touches right here. So it looks like a little under 3, maybe uh, maybe 2.8 as well. And again, I could check those. For example, I want to check the 1.2 to see if that actually does give me 20. Then I could just go back and this is 1.2, 1.2, ah, pretty close to 20. And of course, the uh, 2.8, same idea. You know, 2.8 there. You won't always have the luxury of the, having both the graph and the equation, but see, 19.8 again. So, so those x values produce a number pretty close to 20. Now, uh, the D and E ones here don't relate to the graph because I'm not substituting a particular value in. I'm substituting an expression in, uh, a monomial or a binomial. So H of 3x... What we're going to do, we're going to substitute 3x in place of x here. So we're actually finding a function at a function. Uh, this is something you might get into in a later math course, especially a pre-algebra course. Um, so uh, that's, the, that's the reason I'm doing this here. So uh, h of 3x, we're going to put 3x in here and 3x in here. And remember order of operations. Uh, remember bed mass. You have to do the squaring before you can multiply negative 5 in. So 3x squared is 9x squared. A really common mistake here is, for, is to remember to, to square the x, but not the 3. See, the 3 gets squared as well. That's where the 9 comes from. And I could have multiplied the 20 by the 3x, but I didn't bother. I will the next line. So negative 5 times 9x squared would be negative 45x squared. Uh, negative 5 times 9 is negative 45. And 20 times 3x is 60x. So that's what h of 3x would be. It's negative 45x squared plus 6x, 60x plus 3. Uh, last example here at E, find h of ax minus 1. So we're going to put ax minus 1 in the function. And again, don't forget to put it in place of x here. And in place of x, of course, everywhere you see in the in the functions equation. And uh, so I'm going to do this ax minus 1 squared out here. Just sort of separate. And then I'll substitute in place of this. So... So... Uh, now, you may have heard of FOIL. We're really just multiplying two binomials together. That's what the AX minus 1 squared means. So if I start with, I would multiply, first of all, these uh, AXs together. So AX times AX is A squared, X squared. And then I multiply the AX by this negative 1. So that's minus AX. And then this. So it's another negative AX. And then the negative 1 gives us a 1 in the end. So that's just FOIL, and of course, negative 1ax and negative 1ax is negative 2ax, so we can combine some like terms there. So that is this ax minus 1 squared, so I'm going to put that in place of that. So negative 5 is multiplied by this. And then, again, I could multiply the 20 in now if I wanted to, but I, 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 will, I will just in the next line. So negative 5 gets multiplied by this term, negative 5 times negative 2ax would be positive 10ax, and negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. 20 times the ax is 20 ax, and 20 times negative 1 is negative 20. Of course, plus the 3 now. And we can combine some like terms. 
Uh, this is only one a squared x squared term, but there's a 10ax and a 20ax, which is 30ax, and negative 5, negative 20, and 3 are just numbers. So negative 5 and negative 20 is negative 25, plus 3 would be negative 22. And so that's the simplest expression for what h of ax minus 1 equals. And that's the end of the tutorial.